everybody and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I thought that it would kind of be fun to sit down and talk about like the top five reptiles I've owned, I guess, if that makes sense. Those of you who are familiar with me and my channel will probably already know by now that I have owned quite a lot of different species of animals, reptiles in particular, that is mainly what I keep. So I thought it would be cool to kind of just talk about what my top five would be because I don't know, a lot of people ask me things like that, like what's your favorite pet? What are your favorite couple animals? What kind of animals would you recommend? to be kept as pets and stuff like that. So that's kind of what I want this video to be. So before we get in the video, I just want to kind of explain a few things quickly. Uh, so these are the top five reptiles I've owned just based off like literally just completely my personal preference. This isn't like a top five beginners animal video or anything like that or like top five pets I'd recommend these are just like out of every animal I've owned these are the five that I think I enjoy the most some of them may be considered beginner level some may be more advanced level so this isn't really any like yeah these aren't just like beginner pets or whatever or anything like that this is just my top five favorite reptile species I've owned and now I do also want to say that um just because I say these are my top five doesn't mean that I like dislike all of the other animals I own. The truth is I don't have like a favorite pet or anything like that. I like a lot of the animals that I have for entirely different reasons. Like for example, I like my cat for different reasons than I like a leopard gecko, you know? So like they can't really be compared because they're just so different. But with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the top five reptiles that I've owned. I also do want to say this is in no particular order. That's my cat. Hey. <laughs> Anyways, as I was saying, these are in no particular order, but let's just go ahead and get started. So the first animal that I want to talk about are Bradypodian thamnobates. Now this is a type of chameleon. The common name is the natal midlands dwarf chameleon, I'm pretty sure. So this is a species of chameleon that I have owned since October of 2019. So it's been about, it's been about five or six months at this point that I've been owning them. And in that time of owning them, they have definitely become one of my favorite species to care for. I think that they're incredibly interesting. I think they're super fascinating and I just really, 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 really love having these guys. Something I really like about these chameleons is just their size. So these are a really small species of chameleon. You guys can see just how small they are. So compare those to the common species that we often keep like veiled and panthers and jacksons. They are a lot tinier and because of that, their care in a way is almost more manageable. I don't want to say it's easier or anything like that, but for example, enclosures. Uh, it's way easier to find a store-bought enclosure that will suit these guys than it is for a larger species of chameleon, like Parsons chameleons, which are going to basically need to like special build a cage. Whereas these guys can easily be housed in a variety of different store-bought cages, which is a big perk to me. Most of my larger chameleons are kept in screen enclosures. These guys, I actually keep them in a glass exoterra. Now glass cages for chameleons can be a little bit controversial, but in my opinion, I think that they can work just fine as long as you know how to do it properly. Uh, and I personally really, really like having these guys in a bioactive setup. I like my Brady Podian cages so much better than I like any of my other chameleon enclosures. So that is a big perk to me. This kind of also applies to all chameleons, but I think that they're incredibly fun to feed. These guys uh, often eat things like fruit flies or small crickets, because like I said, these guys are pretty tiny, so I'm not feeding them very large prey items, but things like small black soldier fly larvae, small crickets, fruit flies, whatever, are all great options for them, but just watching them hunt is super fun. Uh, like 
I said with any chameleon I think it's really fun watching them hunt just like their little tongues and stuff I think it's awesome that is definitely something I really really like about these guys chameleons in general are enjoyable because they are diurnal whereas a lot of reptiles are nocturnal so they're most active at nighttime when most people would be sleeping whereas chameleons they are diurnal so they are mostly active in the day so if you're someone who's normally awake during the day your chameleon will be awake at the same time as you which I really like it's nice to be able to go down in my reptile room during the daytime and see my chameleons out and about and just doing whatever they want to be doing that is always a big plus to me personally going back to their size I think that their size really helps too with how you can set up their enclosures for example uh, since they're so tiny and light really thin branches and plants can support their weight really easily whereas with my larger chameleons I need a lot larger thicker branches in order to support their weight so it's harder to create like a really nice live planted chameleon cage that looks naturalistic in my opinion like you can create one that works great for the chameleon and everything but it's not always the most naturalistic in appearance because it's usually like branches zip tied to the screens and stuff which you know doesn't really look super natural it works for the chameleon it's great however doesn't always look the most aesthetically pleasing whereas with these guys since they're so tiny tiny little plants and branches support their weight no problem so like I don't I don't know I find it's just so much easier to give them a nicer naturalistic looking enclosure than it is with some bigger chameleons and now it's not me saying it's impossible to do that for bigger chameleons I think it's just a little bit more challenging if that makes sense so overall those guys are super fun to own I really enjoy owning them and being able to have bioactive setups for them I think that they're great so those are definitely one of my favorite species of chameleons and just reptiles in general that I own so the next animal I want to talk about are African African fat tail geckos. African fat tail geckos have been one of my favorite species of geckos basically for a really long time now. When I was a little kid, I owned an African fat tail gecko. Um, she unfortunately didn't live too long due to health complications she had. I was like seven at the time, so like my parents were her main caretaker and they took her to the vet and everything, but like, yeah. When I was 17 or 18, I think I was 18, I got my African fat tail gecko, who you guys would know as Daisy. So I've had her for a couple years now. And then just recently, back in October of this year, I got a second African fat tail gecko, who I don't think you guys have really met on this channel yet. He was featured in my last video, but I haven't done a formal introduction to him yet, so I'll hold that off for now but so I do have two African fat tail geckos right now and they have just always been one of my favorite species of gecko to own I love them so much basically I just think that they are absolutely adorable African fat tail geckos are fairly similar in appearance to leopard geckos which are much more common in the pet trade than African fat tail geckos are they are related but they're like not the same or anything um, but they do look fairly fairly similar in appearance. Usually the colors and stuff are different, but shape and size wise, pretty similar to a leopard gecko. However, to me, as someone who has owned both fat tail geckos and leopard geckos, I've always almost thought that like fat tail geckos behavior wise are similar to leopard geckos, but they tend to be a little bit calmer and just more shy and I don't know, very cute. I mean, leopard geckos are adorable too, obviously. I love leopard geckos, but to me, African fat tail geckos just have this extra little cuteness in their personality, which I love. Another reason why I like African fat tail geckos is that they are more of a terrestrial, but tropical species. So if you take leopard geckos, for example, they're terrestrial geckos, but they, tend to prefer a more arid environment, whereas African fat tail geckos come from more tropical places, so they like a bit higher humidity and stuff. And because of that, they do require different setups. So if you're going to make a bioactive leopard gecko enclosure, you're going to make it an arid setup and probably use plants like succulents. Whereas for an African fat tail gecko, you want it to be a lot more humid and tropical, so you have a lot of different plant options. Uh, setting up African fat tail gecko enclosures are really fun, in my opinion, because most tropical geckos that we keep in captivity are arboreal whereas these guys are terrestrial so it's a whole different thing you know I don't have many like terrestrial tropical geckos 
so I do like having that it is definitely different um, another thing I really like about African fat tail geckos is just how docile they tend to be obviously every single gecko has its own personality some are gonna be more docile than others but in general African fat tail geckos do tend to be quite docile which makes them pretty good for handling I mentioned earlier how they kind of remind me of leopard geckos but they're like calmer so in my opinion, they're really good geckos for handling because they just don't really move too fast or anything and they're super chill. I love them. They're also super cute to watch hunt because they usually do this little tail wag thing. I know some leopard geckos do it too, but it's just so cute watching them hunt. Um, their eyes are super cute. I love how big their eyes are. Misty, what are you doing? I'm being attacked by a cat. Yeah, in my opinion, African fat tail geckos are just really like underrated in the gecko world because they're just so adorable, so fun to own, so docile usually. Lots of positives to African fat tail geckos. They are definitely a top species of mine. Next on the list, we have a Brazilian rainbow boa. So I got my Brazilian rainbow boa who was named Richard about a year ago now. I got him like last March, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so I've had him for about a year and quickly definitely became one of my favorite species of snake to own. So Richard right now is still pretty small. He's still like a bit of a baby. Like I said, I only got him a year ago and it does usually take them a couple years to reach full adult size, but he has been wonderful. Now, a lot of people will say that Brazilian rainbow boas, especially as babies, tend to be a little bit nippy. Um, Richard, definitely not the case for him at all. He's never like once even attempted to strike at me. He's really, really docile and really calm. And again, this is just my personal opinion. So like I said, a lot of people probably do have nippy baby Brazilian rainbow boas and I happen to just get lucky with a calm one. But based off my personal experience, Richard has been a great snake to own. One of the big plus sides to them is just simply how beautiful they are. They have really awesome coloration, usually like an orange. Uh, sometimes it's maybe more reddish brown uh, with like black markings. And then obviously they have that iridescence which gives them the name of a rainbow boa. So they are just beautiful snakes, but like looks aside, I just really love his personality. He's a very personable snake. He's very, very fun to own and he's awesome to handle. Like I said, Richard is pretty calm and he's really good with handling. I like handling him because he doesn't just sit in a ball, like he doesn't not move, but he's not moving really fast when I handle him. Like for example, if I handle a ball python, usually they don't move that much. If I'm handling my corn snake or milk snake, they're usually moving a lot. Whereas when I'm handling Richard, who is my rainbow boa, he, he does a good mix of both. He's pretty slow moving. He does move around a bit, like he's not just balled up, but he's not moving super fast where I'm like always moving my hands and stuff. So handling Richard is really, really awesome. He's always been a great eater for me. I've never had any issues feeding him at all. He's always eaten. He's great about that. They're not usually considered beginner snakes. Uh, they're not super hard to care for by any means, but they do especially have very high humidity requirements. So they need to be in a very humid environment and they do tend to like it cooler than other snakes. So I do like that with him because, I don't know, it's just different than most of the other snakes I own. He, you know? I don't know. I just like having a snake who has different care than most of my other snakes because it's it's fun to learn and it's fun to do. Brazilian rainbow boas also get a pretty decent size. If you're looking for a snake that's kind of big but not like unbearably large, I think that they can be a really good option. Typically these guys will get around like five to six feet so they do get bigger than like a ball python for example, but it's not going to be a Burmese python that's like huge. Definitely manageable for one person to handle, no problem, but it's still a pretty decent and size snakes so their size could definitely be a big plus if you're looking for something like that. Overall I really enjoy owning my Brazilian rainbow boa. They're definitely an awesome species of snake and I think that they're just very fun. The next animal that I want to talk about is the Lichianus gecko. So as I'm sure a lot of you guys know the Lichianus gecko is the largest species of gecko in the world and they are becoming quite popular in the pet trade. Now these guys tend to be fairly expensive but in my opinion they're definitely well worth it if you're 
able to spend that kind of money on an animal. I've had my Lichianus gecko for over a year now and I'm so glad that I decided to get her because she has been absolutely wonderful and I've had a really good time owning her. I got her when she was a tiny, tiny baby. She was around eight grams when I got her. She's much bigger now, but she's definitely still not full grown. But being able to raise her up from a small baby has been a great experience. One of the things I really like about Legionis geckos is, I don't know, they just seem a lot different than a lot of the other New Caledonian geckos to me, like personality wise. They're very vocal geckos, so you will often hear them making noises and stuff, which is really cool. And I find handling a Legionis gecko is way different than handling like a crested gecko or, or a gargoyle gecko, for example. I don't really know how to describe how it's different, but it definitely just does feel different. The way that they kind of interact with you is just very different from other geckos I've handled. Again, I don't really know how to describe this other than literally just different. I guess in a way she seems almost like more intelligent and aware of her surroundings than some of the other geckos I've handled. She just seems more observant and you know taking in what's going on and stuff really really awesome their size like i said too is really cool they are the largest species of gecko so they can get quite big which personally i like uh, most of my geckos i have are pretty small it'll be cool to have a larger gecko again she's not that big right now but as she gets bigger it'll be really cool to continue owning her i'm currently in the process of making her a whole new enclosure for her adult size because right now she's still in like a smaller enclosure, so she's gonna be upgraded soon. But I've had a lot of fun making that. The way that Lichianus geckos look too is really cool to me. I find that they look a lot different than most other geckos. They're very unique looking, which I really enjoy. Overall, Legionis geckos, pretty cool. I would definitely recommend them if you're interested in them or anything like that. I think that they're an awesome species of animal to have. The last animal I wanna talk about is the Chihua gecko. In my opinion, Chihua geckos are really underrated New Caledonian geckos. When we think of New Caledonian geckos as pets, we normally think of like crusties and gargoyle geckos. And while those are awesome animals too, I think that Chihuahuas are very overlooked. In my time owning a Chihuahua, they quickly became one of my favorite New Caledonian geckos to care for. Uh, their personality tends to just be very spunky and fun. Uh, I love the way they look. Their colors and patterns are really cool. Fun personality, fun to care for. I also really like seeing how my Chihuahua interacts with his enclosure and environment because the way that they interact with their environment just seems so different than the way that like a Crusty interacts with their environment. I don't know why they just seem so different, but I don't know. I really like seeing my Jehua interacting in his enclosure. It's always really fun to see. Also, he is so fun to feed. My Jehua has a very high feeding response, especially when it comes to insects. So feeding him is always super fun because while he does eat like Pangea mix and stuff like that, uh, like I said, he has a really good feeding response when it comes to insects. So it's really fun to like tongue feed or hand feed and things like that. You know, I don't know. It's like rewarding seeing them interact with you in that sort of way when you're feeding them and stuff. I really, really do enjoy it. Anyways, my battery is about to die, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. I hope that you guys enjoyed learning a little bit about some of the animals that I enjoy keeping as pets. I think that these are awesome animals in my opinion. I love them and I'm so glad that I get to own them. So yeah, here's my video talking about them. All of that said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you do, be sure to like and subscribe and don't forget to check out all of my social media. It will be in the description down below. All of that said, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video.